Hi, I'm so excited to have you back with me for day two of this Spiritual Awakening mini course. Hopefully, you found the material from day one engaging and interesting. Just a reminder that integration of content is where the real power lies. So it's one thing to cognitively or cerebrally understand something. It's another thing when we integrate it and we start seeing it show up in our reality. With any of the content around spirituality, there's a process of understanding it and then starting to integrate it and having it be part of your reality. As you start to integrate material around spiritual awakening, you're gonna find that your reality really shifts and changes. And I am so excited for you to go through that transformation and transition. Today, we're gonna to take some time and talk about a couple of topics that build on yesterday's material. If you like this content, then you may also really like my nine month spiritual awakening program. That gives you the tools, the structure, the community, and the support that you need to go through your own healing journey and your own spiritual opening and awakening process. At the end of this video, you're gonna find a link with where you can click and go see if the Spiritual Awakening program is something that you'd like to move forward with. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about being an empath. So first, we're gonna define what is an empath. An empath is somebody who feels other people's feelings, emotions, or physical sensations, or both. Being an empath is truly a gift. Sometimes it gets viewed as a bad thing. When somebody doesn't have a self-care practice that is specific to being empathic, then being an empath may actually feel more like a burden than the beautiful gift that it is. So if you are watching this video and recognize that you're an empath and that feels like a curse to you rather than a gift, then pay attention because understanding that you're an empath and how that impacts your reality is huge. But having a self-care practice in place that's specific for being an empath is gonna be life-changing. You're gonna love it. So stay tuned and let's dig into the material. As an empath, you're sensitive to energy. You're gonna be able to pick up on other people's emotions without them telling you. So we're gonna go over a couple of the common presentations of somebody who's an empath. As an empath, you are going to feel other people's feelings, emotions, or physical sensations. So you can be either an emotional empath or a physical empath or both. As an empath, when you are moving through the world, through your reality, you're gonna find that you are picking up on other people's sensations, other people's emotions, other people's physical sensations. This can be very powerful. So if you walk into a room you may be able to recognize that somebody in there is in a state of transition or maybe turmoil. Maybe they're unsettled, maybe they're struggling. You're gonna be able to pick up on that even if their face doesn't match that. So they may be smiling, they may be acting as if they're happy, but deep down inside, you know that they're really struggling. That's a gift because it gives you the ability to change, shift, or adjust the way that you're engaging and interacting with them. So if you recognize that they're struggling, you're probably gonna meet them with a different level of sensitivity. You may find that you're more understanding if they're short. You may help support them in a different way because you recognize that they are struggling. It's a beautiful thing to be able to meet people where they're at. What can be hard is that as an empath, if you pick up on their sensations, their emotions, 
their physical pain or their physical symptoms, you may carry those around as if they're your own. So if somebody's struggling and you walk into a room, you may perceive that those are actually your emotions. Those are your feelings, that you're somehow sad or lonely or unsettled or struggling. It's beautiful to be able to see somebody in what they're going through and support them if you can. What can be hard is if you absorb that energy and carry it around as if it's your own. Then you're spending the rest of your day thinking that you're sad when you are in fact not sad. I have many clients who have gone through my nine month spiritual awakening program and recognize that they're an empath without a self-care practice. Once they got a self-care practice in place, everything in their reality shifted because all of a sudden they knew their own energy and they were able to recognize when they were carrying energy that was not theirs. In the nine month spiritual awakening program, I walk you through how it is that you can ground, release, or let go of energy that is not yours. There's multiple different techniques in there. And as part of that, my clients who are in the program really step into being an empath and what a gift it is, opposed to it feeling like a curse when they're carrying around energy that isn't theirs. Again, having a self-care practice in place as an empath is priceless. It's so important to understand yourself, who you are, what your beautiful gifts are, and how to manage them correctly. Having that self-care practice in place is gonna put you in a position where you're in control of your own emotions. Instead of feeling sad when you have no reason to feel sad, you'll be able to release or let go of that energy and carry your own, understand your own, but not carry around everybody else's. With everything going on in the world and in our realities right now, I'm sure you can take a moment and recognize that carrying around energy that is not yours isn't beneficial. I want you to hear from a couple of my clients about how the Spiritual Awakening Program helped them in their lives understand their gifts and shift their reality. One of the most important things as an empath is to understand what your own energy feels like. So I'm gonna give you a little practice that I want you to try. When you wake up in the morning, take a quick scan of your body. That's yours, it's your energy. So if you wake up and you have a little dull headache, it's yours, you own it. If you wake up and you feel a little bit cranky, that's yours, you own it. If you wake up and you feel fabulous, that's yours. You own it. And as you go throughout your day, you may want to have a timer that goes off on your phone. Eventually you won't need the timer, but initially it can be a great reminder to check in on your energy. Or you can use something simple like at every meal, take a scan of your body, check yourself and compare it to the morning. So if you felt fabulous when you woke up in the morning, but by noon, your arms feel achy, your shoulders feel achy, you've got a little headache and you're a bit cranky, you may wanna recognize that that's probably not yours. If nothing has happened in your day that created those symptoms for you, then they might not be yours. And so you'll wanna have some sort of a practice where you check your energy multiple times throughout the day. Take a scan of your body and then release the energy that is not yours so that you can go back to feeling your own energy. This is a very simple practice that is amazing at helping you to understand who you are, what your energy feels like, and remove energy that's not yours. It's not beneficial for you to be carrying around other people's energy. 
understanding your own energy is going to allow you to really make some shifts and changes to your reality. Yesterday, we talked a bit about shadow work. I could go on for days and days about shadow work. It's one of my favorite things to talk about and to work with clients on. The reason that I love it so much is because when we look at our shadows, we take back our power. It's always been ours, but sometimes when we hand our power away to shadows, to wounds, to trauma, we forget how powerful we really are. You are a beautiful creator. You are incredibly powerful and you can shift your reality starting today. So if you are moving through life and saying, I wish I felt happier. I wish I felt more settled. I wish that I had joy. I wish that I was in a different place, emotionally, physically, financially, whatever your situation is. If you're here and you wish you were there, then the Spiritual Awakening Program is something that you're gonna love. As you do your shadow work, it's gonna open up the doors for you to be able to manifest effectively. So we're gonna talk a bit about manifesting here on day two. Manifesting is the ability to bring things into your reality through intention. This is an incredibly powerful tool to have in your toolbox and everybody has it. Everybody can manifest. When we manifest, there's a couple important rules. First and foremost, we want to release any sort of resistance that we have to whatever it is that we're manifesting. So let's say we want to manifest a new romantic partner. Step number one would be releasing any sort of resistance that we have to that partner, to an ideal partner, right? So that may look like different things for different people. You may be carrying around some self-limiting thoughts like, I'm not worthy of a healed partner. I'm not worthy of a financially stable partner. I'm not worthy of a partner who shows up for me and sees me. I'm not worthy of a partner who's going to be a good co-creator, a good co-parent, a good business partner, whatever the situation is you would need to address that worthiness issue, those self-limiting thoughts. That happens in shadow work, right? So that's why we talked about shadow work on day one. And it's one of the reasons that I could talk about shadow work all day long. Shadow work is so powerful because it gives you back your power. And when we look at manifesting, people who are phenomenal manifestors do that because they've done their shadow work they have released resistance to whatever it is that they're trying to bring into their reality through intention. So if you wanna be a strong manifester, and I know you have the ability, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is your shadow work. And oftentimes that gets into some inner child trauma work. Again, those are modules in my spiritual awakening program that you may really enjoy. When we're manifesting, we're gonna release resistance to whatever it is that we're trying to bring into our reality. And then we're gonna get clear on what we want. So the universe can't give us what we want if we're wishy-washy about that which we are trying to bring into our reality. So release the resistance, get really clear on what you want, and then state it clearly for the universe what it is that you'd like to bring into your reality. The act of getting really clear on what you want to bring into your reality, but not trying to control how it comes into your reality. So for example, if you want a new romantic partner, you wanna outline what that romantic partner would look like. What are the things, what are the qualities that you're looking for in a romantic partner? You'd wanna get really clear on those and list those. And then, you want to let go of how it is that you think that that individual is going to come into your reality. 
So you don't need to control how that individual pops into your reality and becomes your partner. Sometimes I see clients get really focused on how it's gonna happen. Instead of focusing on how it's gonna happen, focus on that it's gonna happen and let the universe work out the details. So we're gonna keep talking about this romantic partner as an example. If you try and focus too much on how this partner is gonna come into your reality, for example, I only want a partner, a romantic partner, to come into my reality from a dating app or the opposite, right? From an organic connection. But that's not how this person is gonna come into your reality then you're going to miss bringing that person into your reality because you've been too specific on how. So instead of focusing on how you want something to happen, just state that you want it to happen and start to feel into what that feels like. Align your vibration level, the one that we talked about earlier in day number one, with what it feels like to be with that romantic partner. Start feeling into that. What does that vibration feel like to you? What does the ideal romantic partner feel like? As you sense that, as you feel that vibration level, really embrace it, step into it. And the more that you revisit that energy level, the easier it is for the universe to bring that into your reality because you're already aligned with it. And again, that's one of the reasons that we start by looking at vibration levels. So in my nine month spiritual awakening program, module number one is about vibration levels. The reason that I have it as module number one is because it's one of the building blocks for your spiritual opening and awakening process. It's one thing for me to tell you this, but it's another to hear it from people who've been through the program and who have seen the real results. So let's hear from a couple of clients who've been through the spiritual awakening program and saw some amazing shifts in their reality. So if you're watching this video and you want to change your reality, if you want to be in control of your life, where you're headed, what you get out of this human experience, then you're probably going to love my spiritual awakening program. I see people spend $10,000 on vacation, right? You go away, you're gone for two weeks, you're away from your reality, and maybe you feel great. Maybe you feel fabulous, but at the end of the two weeks, you come back and you're stepping right back into your reality. So what if instead of spending that money on vacation, what if you invested in yourself? What if you committed to yourself? What if you thought you were worth the change? You were worth investing in? You were worth doing the spiritual awakening program and changing your life. At the end of a two week vacation, you're headed right back to your reality. At the end of the spiritual awakening program, you have a whole new reality. You're in the driver's seat of your life and you get to create whatever it is that your heart desires. And you're gonna be clear on what you want because you're gonna have gone through the process of really digging deep on yourself, figuring out who you are, what you want, and aligning with it. On day one, I told you a little bit about going to the doctors and being put on an antidepressant because I was sad. I was unfulfilled and I was sad every day. I had anxiety, I didn't feel grounded, I didn't feel settled and I didn't feel happy. So if you can relate to that and you are finding yourself in a situation where you feel unhappy, unsettled, anxious, depressed, and you're looking to fix the problem from within, 
You're going to love my spiritual awakening program. It gives you the tools, the structure, the support, and the community that you need to really get yourself into alignment, figure out who you are, what you want, and a path to get there. It doesn't matter when you found yourself on this path. I have a lot of people that initially say to me, I wish that I'd done the spiritual awakening program earlier. It was so life-changing. And what if I had done that five years earlier, 10 years earlier? The reality is, is that there's no time like the present. You are worth investing in right now. And sure, maybe it would have been nice to have changed your reality five years ago. But aren't you happy that you have the opportunity to change it now, opposed to waiting another five years? During this human experience, you're going to get the opportunity to make anything that you want a reality. But you have to understand how powerful you are as a creator and as a manifester. One of the things that I see very commonly with clients is that they've got shadows and a wounded inner child that really prevent them from feeling worthy of stepping into all of the beautiful things that want to come into their reality. As they address that inner child trauma and as they address those shadows, organically and naturally, they shift their vibration level through law of attraction. They're going to bring these things into their reality that they've always been wanting, that they've always been desiring, that their heart has been calling for and longing for and waiting for. And through the spiritual awakening program, they're able to address their shadows, address their inner child trauma, shift their vibration levels, understand themselves, and accept that they are worthy of these beautiful things that are going to come into their reality. And then they welcome them into their reality and get to watch their life change. Looking at a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset is one of the most powerful things we get to do. Oftentimes, we are raised with a scarcity mindset. It's the thought pattern that there is not enough to go around. There's a limited amount of whatever it is that you're talking about it. Financial abundance, love, time, whatever it is that you're trying to bring into your reality. An abundance mindset is the thought that there's enough to go around, that there will always be enough to go around. Taking a shift from a scarcity mindset into an abundance mindset simply happens through doing shadow work and doing some inner child trauma work. Oftentimes, a scarcity mindset is something that we have learned in childhood. We get the opportunity to unlearn that and recreate an abundance mindset, which is going to shift our entire reality. One of the things that's really powerful about the Spiritual Awakening Program is that if you do the work, you're going to take a shift in your mindset into this beautiful abundance mindset that will pay off for the rest of your life. So if that sounds good, then click the link at the end of this video and go learn a bit more about my nine month spiritual awakening program. Not only will it save you money, it will earn you money throughout your life because you'll be walking into your abundance mindset before you even know it. One of the things that you're going to really like about the Spiritual Awakening Program is that there is a community that you will get to be a part of with like-minded people. People who are looking to heal their wounds, to expand, to grow, to shift their reality. It's a high vibration, beautiful community that is going to accept you and honor you and see you and that you will be free to grow and learn and work with other like-minded people. You'll get to see mirrors in other people, get to see yourself in other people, and you will get support and community 
as you shift and grow and change and go through your spiritual opening and awakening process. Having community is huge. Our reality is made up in our mindset. And so stepping into a community of like-minded people is going to reinforce for you that everything that you are stepping into can happen. You're gonna to get to see other people's stories, you're gonna to get to watch other people shift, other people grow, and you're gonna to get to celebrate them as much as they celebrate you. You're gonna love the high vibration community that goes along with the Rose Quartz Mediumship Spiritual Awakening Program. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me, message me on Facebook or Instagram, or look me up on YouTube and send me a message. I'd love to connect with you. I'd love to support you. And more than that, I'd love to watch you step into the reality that you want. Step into the life that you want. At the end of this video, you're going to find a link that will bring you to my nine month spiritual awakening program. If you're ready to change your life, if you're ready to be in control of your life, if you're ready to be empowered, click the link. You won't be sorry.